The left likes to say that snitches get stitches. And when it comes to the police, they say, don't cross the thin blue line. Basically, these are words that mean you should not call out your own side when they do something wrong. The activists warn you that if you rat on them, they'll injure you with lacerations, I guess. Now, the police thing is usually like you're not supposed to do it. It's taboo and people get mad at you. But uh, over here in the milquetoast moderate aisle, we don't really have anything where we threaten someone for doing something. But I will say in the kind of the journalistic sense of things, if you snitch, stand by your snitching and don't cry about it. In this story from five on your side, KSDK, personal information from 900 plus St. Louisian tipsters exposed on social media. This was not a hack. It was not a breach. My understanding is that this is sunshine laws, meaning the public documents submitted where you were trying to rat on your neighbors are publicly available to everyone. So when you rat it on your neighbors, they are now able to see that it was you who rat it on them and they get to be mad at you. Maybe instead of being upset that your information got leaked, you just stop snitching on people who are engaging in constitutionally protected behaviors and you get off your high horse and stop being all high and mighty. Well, I got a funny thing for you. We'll read this. But the first thing I want to point out, yeah, unsurprisingly, it tends to be Democrats. Just the News says, Dems more likely than Republicans to report neighbors during pandemic. They mention this is a huge partisan different difference, Bryce Beeson said, by a 44% to 31% margin, a plurality of Democrats would turn in their neighbors. By a 60% to 25% margin, Republicans would not. Independents are evenly divided. Other data I've released shows that a plurality of Republicans now believe the worst of the pandemic is behind us. Democrats strongly disagree. Well, apparently then, Democrats in their fear and panic have begun snitching on their neighbors. And perhaps they didn't realize that public documents belong to the public and everyone gets to find out. Documents with the names of people who reported stay-at-home violations are being shared online. One tipster said she won't count on the county's help again. This is actually from April 24th. A spree of social media posts this week warn that St. Louis County released the information it got from people who reported businesses in violation of the stay at home order. The document released in response to a sunshine law request included names and contact information of the people making the reports in their messages. Some asked for anonymity. Aw, poor babies. You wanted to snitch, but you didn't want anyone to find out, huh? Posts and comments in response to the document invited retaliation against the people who utilized the county's, the county's inbox for tips about non-essential businesses that stayed open. The I-Team's PJ Rondhawa talked to the wo- with a woman whose tip was among those released. Patricia asked that we not use her last name because she fears what someone might do with the information in that document. We're in a society where doing what's right doesn't always get rewarded, she said. Patricia has lupus. Two other people in her house have, an, have autoimmune issues. We have to be extra careful because we won't have the strength to fight this, she said. I saw a lot of businesses that were non-essential that were open and had lines outside. Parking lots filled as if the order didn't matter to them. And that was kind of frustrating. And so you got mad and said, <clears throat> Karen, that you would like to shut down their businesses. You know what we should do? We got to start calling these women Karen more often because apparently it really, really triggers them. So uh, Karen asked, and look, you know what? If she doesn't want anyone to know her real name, I'm just going to call her Karen then. How about that? Tips flood in after county asks for help. What Patricia Patricia did is exactly what St. Louis County intended when it established two ways for people to submit tips on non-compliant businesses. County government announced the creation of an online form and dedicated email addresses address for those tips in the last week of March. In a little over a week, those channels received more than 900 tips from the public. The release documents show, uh, the, the, the release documents show, among the complaints are employees and their family members asking for anonymity because they feared backlash from employers. Now that kind of sucks. If, you're, if your job is threatening you and trying to make you come in when you're not supposed to, yeah, that I can understand. Look, ultimately, that's not the same as someone snitching on their neighbor. That's you filing a workplace grievance. And if your information gets released, that's unfortunate because they might retaliate now. The online form some of them used warned the tips they submitted could become public records. So now you got no excuse, right? Everybody knew it was going to happen. A disclaimer 
that form submitters had to acknowledge before sending says, I have been advised that this form and any other communication may be considered an open record pursuant to the Sunshine Law, Chapter 610 RSMO, St. Louis County, uh, RSMO, St. Louis County may be required to release this form as well as other communications as a matter of law upon request by any member of the public, including the media. Patricia, aka Karen, said she never expected it to end up on Facebook, posted by someone whose motive seemed to be revenge. Why are you snitching on your neighbors? Of course, they're going to get mad at you. The Facebook post headlined said, here you go. The gallery of snitches, busybodies, and employees who rat out their own neighbors and employers over this panic demic. A person whose Facebook profile is named Jared Tosh told the I team that he posted the documents knowing that there might be consequences for the people named within. Quote, if they are worried about retaliation, they should have read the fine print which stated their tips would be open to public record subject to a sunshine request and should not have submitted tips in that manner to begin with. I released the info in an attempt to discourage such behavior in the future. Tosh declined a phone or video interview. When asked how he felt about the possibility that someone who reported a business might lose their job, Tosh wrote, I'd call it poetic justice, instant karma, a dose of their own medicine. What goes around comes around. They are now experiencing the same pain that they themselves helped to inflict on those they filed complaints against. Woo! Dude's getting spicy talking about karma. That's exactly the attitude that has Patricia concerned now. Aw, is Karen worried? I'm only worried about COVID. Or she said, I'm not only worried about COVID. I'm worried about someone showing up at my door, showing up at my workplace, or getting or, or me getting fired for doing what is right. If it was right, would people really want to retaliate against you for doing it? Perhaps so. Perhaps so, yes. But it's not right. And that's why this person, unrelated, released the information, because most people think you shouldn't be an, a, a, a snitch on your neighbors. Now, listen, I don't agree with the idea of snitches getting stitches. I think people should hold other people accountable in their own communities for doing things that are wrong. But you need to know where the line is. If somebody went off a brick and smashed someone over the, over the head, yeah, you call the police about that. If someone implements an unconstitutional order and someone else is minding their own business, you might as well mind your own business and stop snitching on your neighbors to the government. How it got to your newsfeed, St. Louis County told the I-Team that it released the information to a broadcast journalist in response to a Sunshine Law request. Jared Tosh wrote in the original Facebook post that he had filed a Sunshine Law request for the documents, but later stated that he reposted them from a different group that published them first. It was the media, man. It was journalism. Congratulations. The Missouri Sunshine Law gives the public and media the right to request records made or received by any public agency, with some exceptions. Among those exceptions is a clause allowing tips to, mun to municipal hotlines about abuse and wrongdoing to be withheld. But the county's review of the, uh, of the request found no reason to withhold information about who sent the tips. The St. Louis County Executive Director of Communications, Doug Moore, wrote, in this particular instance, our county's counselor office consulted with the attorney general's office on releasing the list of those who had filed complaints against county businesses. We were told all the information was public and we should not redact except for HIPAA information. Withholding information goes against what journalists push us to be as transparent as possible. Moore also mentioned that the county is working to be more transparent following the consent order between the county, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think we get the point on this one. I'm going to wrap it up just taking a look at the partisan nature of the issue. I'm curious if the people who were getting their information released were actually Democrats or probably just random old people, uninitiated, someone dumb enough and amoral enough to go ratting on someone minding their own business. They mentioned during, uh, during its White House coronavirus task force, task, task force briefings, Officials have encouraged Americans to limit social gatherings to, to under 10 people, with the CDC stating its coronavirus guidelines at a substantial level, at a substantial level of community transmission it is recommended to cancel mass gatherings of any size. Suburban and urban voters are evenly divided on the Just the News Daily poll question. However, by a 53 percent to 28 percent margin, rural voters would not report their neighbors. This is consistent with a tremendous amount of data I'm seeing highlighting the difference differences between suburban, urban, and rural voters, Rasmussen said. There was also a gender gap. Women are evenly divided. However, by a 51 to 32 percent margin, men would not report their neighbors to the police. 
So it seems like women are more likely than men to snitch on you. Women are also more likely than men to be Democrats. And people who are Democrats are more likely to snitch on you. So there seems to be like a, a uh, um, you know, some kind of overlap here in whatever these factions are. Now, I got to say, man, based on the data and all this stuff, it sounds like the Republican Party is going to be all dudes and the Democratic Party is going to be all women at some point. I know I'm kind of kidding. But let me tell you something. There's a big difference between calling out legitimate crimes that hurt people. There's something else when you have panic, speculation, and people minding their own business. Nonviolent offenses versus violent offenses. Now, some on the left have argued, but if you're going out with COVID, you're going to risk other people's lives. Then you just don't go out. It's complicated. I got to tell you what, there's, there's, no really easy, there's no real easy way to, uh, to decide where that moral line is. So I'll put it this way. No matter what it is you're reporting, be prepared to stand behind what it is you're doing. Don't hide. Okay. If you want to snitch on somebody because they're violent, I got no problem if I see someone do something and I snitch on them and say, that was me. I called you out. Don't do it again. Now, if you got a problem with it, there must be something wrong with what you're doing. And if you're scared, well, guess what? These things come with the territory. I'll leave it there. I will see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out.